<laughs> oh, oh, hello there. I was just doing some light reading about my favorite villain of all time. You know, I was just getting ready to recap some television. So glad you stopped by. So am I. I just love company. <laughs> Let's put a smile on that face. Hmm. I know I've got a box cutter around here somewhere. In September of 1992, Batman the Animated Series began airing on the Fox Kids television block of programming. This noir-style cartoon was developed by Bruce Timm, Paul Dini, and Mitch Bryan, and was produced by Warner Brothers Animation. The show would run for 85 episodes between 1992 and 1995, featuring Batman facing off against some of the best in his rogues gallery, and even creating a few new characters that would become iconic and revamping some classic characters to make them even more memorable. I recently picked up the entire series and began a rewatch that was long overdue. Each episode of this show, I'll be recapping and reviewing an episode from the series through adult eyes, with my good friend the Joker getting the final thought on it. That's right. I'm the real star. This other idiot's just a puppet. I'll be covering the series using the production order of the episodes, not the order that they aired. The main reason for this is that some of the two-parter episodes didn't air back-to-back, -back, and I'm not really sure the logic there. The production order features everything in a lineup that makes sense. So, without further ado, let's begin with Season 1, Episode 1, On Leather Wings. The first thing that I have to mention about this show is the opening. It's probably the best animated opening of all time. You have this great little scene of Batman apprehending some baddies on a rooftop while Danny Elfman's score plays over it, just setting the mood for the whole series. Upon my rewatch, though, I, I did wonder what the guys were doing at the bank. I mean, they're clearly not robbing it, but they must be responsible. I mean, why else would they run from the cops, you know? I'm guessing arson is probably the motivation. There's plenty of criminals in Gotham that seem to just enjoy blowing things up with little to no monetary gain as a result, so I think it checks out. The other thing I love about this show is the title card of each episode. The artwork is almost haunting in the way it's presented and teases you with what's to come. I'd say the only downside is that the titles themselves usually leave no mystery as to who the Dark Knight will be matching wits with each episode. The episode begins with two cops patrolling the city via... blimp. Why does the GCPD have so many blimps? It can't be an effective way to police. Wait, what am I saying? Of course it isn't. <laughs> if it was, they wouldn't need Batman, you know? I, ju I just don't understand the logistics. Like, what can you do in a blimp? They aren't particularly fast or maneuverable, and... It's not like you can pull someone over if you see a traffic violation. Plus, I don't think I'd want to be called a blimp cop. You know, I mean, look, they are striking, I will say that, but not practical in any way. What do you think? Police blimps, yay or nay? One of the cops, voiced by Kevin Conroy in a voice that is very similar to his Bruce Wayne, thinks he sees something fly by with bat wings. We then see the shadow of this bat-like creature flying through the city, leading us to Phoenix Pharmaceuticals. Inside, a security guard, with dreams of being a radio personality, gets assaulted by the creature and thrown out a window. We then see a newspaper headline implying that Batman has been charged with the creature's crime. W what's up with the guy's picture? I think it's supposed to be the security guard, but he had gray hair in the previous scene, and the hair peeking out of the bandages here is black. Like, it seriously makes him look like a different guy. At Mayor Hill's office, hard-boiled detective with a hatred of Batman, Harvey Bullock, asks for a task force to hunt down the Dark Knight. Gordon opposes the idea, but the mayor grants Bullock what he wants to catch the Batman. We also get a brief glimpse of District Attorney Harvey Dent flipping a coin, which is... subtle. It's... subtle. Yeah. Also, what's with all the Harveys? Harvey Dent. Harvey Bullock. Harvey Gordon. I mean, come on. <laughs> I... I kid. <laughs> I know Gordon's first name is Commissioner. At the Batcave, Batman sits reading the paper in full cape and cowl. Come on, guy. I know you're Batman, but surely you can relax in the Batcave without the mask on. Alfred enters with a cup of coffee and a sassy quip. Gotham police declare war on Batman. I gather you'll be reading how to make friends and influence people. Batman has been analyzing some recent pharmaceutical break-ins and believes them to be connected. He heads out to investigate... Wait. Wait a minute. This Batman actually does detective work? Like, I thought all Batman does is complain about people wearing hockey pants and pick fights with super aliens. Tell me. Do you bleed? 
Batman heads to Phoenix Pharmaceuticals to check out the scene of the crime, but he's spotted by two lab technicians who are about to get it on at work. Wait, this was a kid's cartoon? Batman gasses the cop outside the crime scene and then struts through the police tape like he owns the place. Bullock gets a report that Batman has been spotted, so he calls in his strike force and heads to Phoenix Pharmaceuticals. Meanwhile, Batman graffitis the crime scene and puts on his Cyclops cosplay uh, to, to find a hair sample and the tape recorder the security guard had when he was attacked. Before Batman can leave, however, the building is surrounded by cops who exit their van like a high school football team. The cops track Batman to a room with flammable warnings all over the outside of it, but uh, they decide to throw a tear gas grenade in to smoke him out anyway. Also, I, I don't think they know how tear gas works because the grenade still explodes near some gas cans, causing a good portion of the building to blow up. Honestly, I, I don't think an episode is canon if something doesn't blow up in spectacular fashion. Batman escapes and saves one of the cops' lives in the process. Batman saving police lives? Is that allowed? We cut to Bruce Wayne visiting the bat exhibit at Gotham Zoo, where he runs into Dr. March, who must be related to the Penguin. I mean, seriously, this guy looks like he could be Oswald's uncle or something. He also immediately puts out shady vibes. Like, if this isn't the bad guy, you're meant to think that he is. Bruce gives him the hair sample to examine, claiming that he's heard some noises in his chimney and wonders if he has a bat problem. Seems like something the bat computer could analyze, but I'm sure there's a method to Bruce's madness. Bruce then meets Dr. Francine Langstrom and immediately goes from Michael Keaton Batman to Val Kilmer Batman. I hope Mr. Wayne understands you mean no disrespect. Well, of course not, miss. Then Dr. Langstrom, Francine's husband, wait, is there a Mrs. Mr. Thing for doctors? Oh, yes. He would be called Mr. Doctor. Are you sure about that? How could you ask that? Look at this plush face. Would I lie? Okay. Bruce then meets Mr. Dr. Langstrom. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you were dumb enough to fall for that. <laughs> Mr. Doctor, how ridiculous. Bruce meets Dr. Kurt Langstrom. Bruce plays an audio tape of the creature when it attacked the security guard and claims that it's the noise he's hearing from his chimney. I'm sorry. If you heard that in your chimney, you might assume you have a demon problem, but there's no way you think you got bats. The power of Christ compels you! The power of Christ compels you! Later on, back at the bat cave, Alfred throws out some more sass. I didn't realize you'd taken up listening to rock and roll, sir. <laughs> oh, the man is an international treasure. Batman gets a call from Dr. March telling him that he has common brown bats, and the noise he heard in his chimney is a combination of bats and starlings. Well, Bruce has the bat computer check the information March provided, and as he suspected, it's a lie. That's, that's where you messed up. You don't lie to Batman. He doesn't take it well. Back at Phoenix Pharmaceuticals, we see someone destroying the hair sample and the audio tape. We then see someone going all Jekyll and Hyde in the darkness and assume it's Dr. March popping pills. Batman arrives and instead finds Mr. Doctor... <laughs> Dr. Kurt Langstrom, who exposits that March created the formula, but it was he that had the gall to test it, creating a new species. He claims that he wanted to stop, but that the beast had taken control, finding the means to bring itself out. See, kids? This is why you stay off drugs. Kurt starts laughing maniacally, prompting Batman to get ready for some good old-fashioned fisticuffs, uh, but then Kurt starts to change into the man-bat, and we get the most authentic bat reaction of the episode. <laughs> the man-bat tosses Batman around like a rag doll and is about to finish him off when Mrs. Doctor enters the room. <laughs> Damn it, Joker! <laughs> the man-bat flees at the sight of Francine, flying out the window. Batman grapples the creature's leg and gets pulled along with it. While flying, the creature slams Batman into the blimp from the start of the episode. <laughs> what are the odds? 
Of all the police blimps in the Gotham sky, that one keeps encountering giant bats. Anyway, the blimp cops phone it in, resulting in Detective Bullock and Commissioner Gordon taking to the sky in a chopper. See? See, they have them! Why the hell are they using blimps? <sighs> Best guess? Gotham likes things that easily explode. Gordon and Bullock see Batman straddling the man-bat in the sky, I guess proving that Batman is innocent of the pharmaceutical break-ins, but like, if that's the extent of their investigation, that's pretty half-assed. I didn't authorize this statement. Batman puts the man-bat in a sleeper hold and just, just goes to town on his face MMA style. The creature flies into a billboard, knocking itself unconscious. The police chopper approaches, but Batman picks up the man-bat and flees with him into the night. See, now if I were a cop, that would look real suspicious. I, I think I have to side with Bullock on this, and that's, that's not a statement I anticipate making very often. Back at the Batcave, Batman uses the list of stolen chemicals to make a cure for Kurt. The episode ends with Batman bringing Kurt back to Francine in, in what looks like a death shroud. <laughs> way, way to put her at ease, Bruce. She asks if Kurt will change again, and Batman says, No. The formula's out of his system. Thank goodness. I don't think Francine wants to see what man-bat withdrawals look like. Batman says one final line that teases a possible return to the man-bat in the future. It's over. For now. All in all, I think it was a really solid episode, showing us a lot of the traits that we've come to associate with Batman over the years. Oh, what do you know? There wasn't one appearance of me this whole episode, and that is definitely getting marked down in my book. I will admit, it's a good example of Bats doing what Bats does best, putting his detective nose into other people's business. I'm gonna have to cure him of that with an acid bath. <laughs> oh. This was a fun little cautionary tale about the dangers of sleeping with bats. I don't care how ripped they are. Don't do it. Four out of five, man bats in the belfry. Sleeping with bats? What are you talking about? I don't know, kid. I fell asleep partway through the episode. Join us next time when we'll be covering Christmas with the me, which is definitely better than Christmas with your family. <laughs> Till next time, kitties! You know, I've got a much better theme song for this episode. Ready? Take these leather wings and learn to fly again. Go on a murder spree. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon to be notified when more Batman the Animated Recap episodes go up. And we've got other cool shows on the channel, so stick around. You might find something else that you like.